Hello Laziali all over the world, welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. I'm Vittorio Campanile and exclusively with us we have Alistair McKenzie. We have to discuss what happened last night, Alistair. Is it true that you were with <laughs> Donald and that's why you went to find a place on the bench? Uh, I, I've been under strict instructions to not <laughs> confirm or deny that anything like this happened. But uh, yeah, I mean... I'm probably about half a stone heavier than I was yesterday. So, yeah, <laughs> take what you will from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Lukaku didn't finish on the bench. Inzaghi explained it's not an injury issue. Uh, that was what Sky was saying before the beginning of the match. It's disciplinary. So, it looks like Lukaku was twice late, probably at the training session. And so, Inzaghi decided to punish and give an example to the to the rest of the team. Uh, the, the question, Alistair, before talking about the rest of the match is, when you already have eight players missing and the bench is full of youngster, um, was it the right time to take make this decision or could Inzaghi close one eyes and maybe wait for another match? Well, this is the thing. I think when I, when I first saw that it was for disciplinary reasons, I assumed that it must have been something quite serious. Perhaps that... Jordan Lukaku had said something to Inzaghi after he found out that Jevon Anderson was going to play or, you know, something kind of serious disciplinary breach. But to be honest, when I found out he's just been late for a couple of sessions, I did, I did wonder if maybe Inzaghi could have postponed the, the punishment, at least given the ridiculous number of problems this team had. I mean, the bench was just a Primavera squad, basically, wasn't it? So... Yeah, I mean, thankfully, Javin Anderson went on and had a good game, so it wasn't too much of an issue, but uh, we can get on to that. I, f I just found it a bit of a strange time to do it, but like you said before we came on, I suppose you do have to set boundaries somewhere, so do you think it was the right thing to do? I think, you know, if there are rules, they have to be respected, even in a tough situation like this one where you don't have that many options. So it sends a message that no one is above the rules, so... Yeah, and, and let's be honest, Lukaku played badly in the last couple of weeks or so. He wasn't going to come in and make a difference. So, And Alistair, we finally saw Javan Anderson starting. Um, I thought he played a, a, a decent match. I mean, especially considering he was playing against Juventus. I, I think he played better than John in the last uh, couple of matches or so. Yeah, I think he was <clears throat> he was the biggest and nicest surprise from this game, I think. Because um, we have to remember as well, not only was this the first time he was actually starting in a Serie A match, but he was also starting out of position because he doesn't usually play on the left-hand side. He usually Never. plays on, on the right. So uh, this is very much a case of putting a guy um, really into the firing line in a very difficult situation against a very difficult opponent. And yeah, considering all those things, I thought he did really well, um, better than expected at least. First half in particular, I think he made a big contribution to what was uh, a surprisingly well-organized performance in the first half. Uh, and yeah, I think we can be quite encouraged by that and hope that he's given Inzaghi something to think about. I mean, it did take, obviously, a serious crisis where not only have we lost all these players to injury, but the guys who've been playing in that position have been so out of form. Um, but I think there was enough, definitely, from what we saw last night to, to, to make me feel that Inzaghi should be using him again before the end of the season, and preferably in his, in his favourite role as well. Yes, even though Lazzari is playing uh, very well and he's probably the fittest player of this team right now. So, But yeah, I, I was asking when Javan Anderson would have a chance and finally he had it. And even playing on the opposite side, which is difficult for one that is only right-footed, I think he had a decent game. And uh, yes, much better in the first half. I thought in the second, he was a little bit fatigued. You know, never playing, never starting a match, never playing 90 minutes. Uh, it's a toll on you when you finally start. And in the second half, he was very tired, and so he was subbed. Uh, Alice, it was strange to see a Sherby stop <laughs> moving on the left side instead of maybe giving Falbo a chance. To <laughs> yeah. 
Honestly, when I saw that, I I was just um, I kind of had my head in my hands by that stage. It was it was tough. The the blow of conceding the two goals in three minutes at the start of the second half, and especially the way that they both came about, which we'll get onto. But then, yeah, I mean, at Chervy, we've already spoken about this, how tired these guys are who have been playing every match, like Milinkovic and Acerbi and Strakosh and so Immobile. But uh, like I said on Twitter last night, as if he isn't tired enough already, now you've put him in the position that requires the most running on the entire team. And to be fair to him, uh, he did a decent job. I mean, I think I, I saw in the, the post-match statistics that he had the most successful um, passes in, in the opposition third of the pitch of any player in the Lazio team, which is quite surprising. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think there have to be other options. We did get a, a couple of questions on Anderson before we move on to something else. But Darren L said, will we see Javan Anderson become a starting uh, left midfielder for the remaining four games? And Patrick Bowman said, Without exaggerating Anderson's performance, did he overperform? Or why hasn't Zaghi not given him a chance before tonight? Is he too loyal to his starting players? I think we know about Zaghi's loyalty to his starting players, but what, what do you think about the idea of him, um, why it's taken so long? Because where Anderson differs, I suppose, to some of the other guys we'll talk about, is that he's already, I think, 24 years old. He's already had a bit of a career behind him. This isn't the same thing as having a Primavera player getting a first shot. So do you think there's that this might have just been an overperformance do you, or or is it a suggestion of something better to come? Well, to be honest with you, it's not that Javan Anderson did anything amazing. I think he did his job. So, I mean, I don't think we can expect something less from him. The biggest difference is that Javan Anderson played in that position on the other side, obviously. But he already played in a 3-5-2 in a, in a winger position. So he, he's good. He's better than Johnny to defend. And um, so that's why I was asking to see him playing. I think one of the reasons why he didn't play, we, we, we saw it at the end of the, of the match when Inzaghi said, this is my players, I will defend it always because they did something amazing. So, you know you can see that Inzaghi is defending the team. And let's not forget that at the beginning of the season, Jamal Anderson wasn't in this team. He was sent to the Primavera. So, obviously, Inzaghi didn't trust Jamal Anderson that much. And on the other side, will he start? Well, it looks like Marusic will be fit soon. And uh, if Marusic is fit, is fit, well, I think he will start in front of Jamal Anderson, which makes more sense, obviously. But I think this could be... a you know, another option for Inzaghi uh, for the rest of the season and maybe uh, the next year, who knows. But yeah, <clears throat> I would say that uh, he didn't overachieve. He showed that, that he can play in that position and he's a much better player in that position than Johnny. Yeah, I think that that helped his case, to be honest. I think you're right. He didn't overperform. You know, he wasn't absolutely sensational or a, it wasn't a breakthrough performance or anything. But I think the the bar has been set so low for our expectations when it comes to left wing backs recently that it, it felt like something better than maybe it was. But yes, yeah, it certainly shows the, the, that he can do a job, which is what we need from these, these squad players, this kind of third layer, I suppose, of, of guys. And, I mean, that brings us on to the, <clears throat> the next ones where we've been asked uh, by Caccio to talk about the performances of the young players, says in brackets, Anderson, Vavro, etc. Um, I suppose Andre Anderson, um, he doesn't specify which one, but I guess we can talk about Andre now and, and Vavro. And then, of course, at the end, Vittorio, we saw uh, Luca Falbo and Raul Moro get their debuts as well. So, of all games away to Juventus. But what did you think of all, all those guys coming off the bench? Well, Andre Anderson had uh, started well, then a little bit when, when Lazio was putting only the ball in the box. Obviously, he's not a great header, so he a little bit disappeared. But I think he's an interesting player. And I think Inzaghi should try, especially if Luis Alberto is injured, to give him more, more space. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's another interesting player. Raul Moro uh, um, um, was really looking forward to see him playing because 
so I saw fast. Him, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Bonucci take a big gamble on that on that tackle because you know if he hits Raul Moros, well, that's a red card and the game is completely different. So I'm really curious to see Raul Moro and hope hope that Inzaghi will give him more space in the coming weeks. And um, yeah, Falbo it's a player that he's another one who did really well in the in the Primavera. I don't think he's ready for Serie A level yet, but it, it's good to see him start. And about Vavro, I'll say only this thing. When he came in, Cristiano Ronaldo didn't have a chance. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um, to be honest, Vavro really quite impressed me. I mean, just the confidence he was playing with, um, we've not seen an awful lot of. I think it's fair to say that so far, a lot of his time at Lazio was being kind of characterized by indecisiveness and making kind of the wrong decisions at the wrong moments. But last night, that was Luis Felipe more than Dennis Bavro, who was guilty of that, I suppose. Um, I mean, I think we should talk about the performance as a whole, what we liked and didn't like. I think <laughs> the penalty, I don't think we need to spend too much time on. It's just one of these things. It's the correct call, but I think we need to be angry at the rule rather than the, the decision uh, for me, because I think maybe there's an argument that the, the arm wasn't inside the box. I, I don't think they could really tell that for sure from the images they got that he was inside the box. But it's infuriating, uh, this this handball rule and the fact that um, they can be given so easily now. But then, yeah, I mean, it, it was... Uh, I, I don't know, how much do you think we should take from the fact that let's do it just when they really needed to settle, then made a really bad mistake for the second goal as well? I don't know if you were saying the same thing if it wasn't Bastos allowing the penalty. Uh, I, I think... <laughs> And I said it on my Twitter account. I think Luis Felipe in particular is a great defender. He can really become uh, one of the best. And But it's very similar to Bastos. When Bastos is focused, he's a good defender. The problem is with these two players is that you know that in any single match they can switch off and do stupid things. And we know the rules. We know it very well. And Bastos still jump with the with the arms wide open, so you know that's a stupid mistake from an experienced player uh, that cost Lazio three points. So it, it's in a certain way, it's positive to say that Lazio lost only because of these two mistakes. On the other hand, we have to be careful because obviously, if you are a defender, if you make a mistake, you're gonna allow a big chance to the opposite team, and that's what happened yesterday. So, you know, I think Luis Felipe is a great defender, but has to be 95 minutes with the mind switched on. And same thing, Bastos. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, and yeah, I do agree. I, I do think that despite my uh, um, ridiculous levels of appreciation for, for Bastos, I have to agree with you. He, um, he should have learned by now that you, you can't be charging down shots with your arms flailing around anymore, uh, rightly or wrongly, you just have to adapt to, to the way things are now. And whether that means you might not get to the shot on time, um, that's where it's difficult. Because if you're needing to sprint out and close down a shot, then it's going to be hard to keep your arms in by your side. But you really need to be doing the awkward kind of shuffle they do with their arms behind the back, because otherwise it's just going to be penalty after penalty which it kind of has been since the break, to be honest, for last year. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like you, you suggested there, for me, it's frustrating to have those two errors happen so close to one another. But actually, um, the performance as a whole, I think we have to be quite happy with them, especially for me, Giro Immobile, because yep. I think he showed a massive improvement compared to what we've seen before obviously hit that post in the first half, which would have been uh, a real game changer of a goal and took his penalty well. He was just linking up very well, holding the ball up, creating a few chances, moving well. I think that that was probably the single most um, important uh, improvement we saw from the team was to see Giro back. And it shows you what importance he has in this team is that when he's playing better, the whole team plays better. 
Definitely, definitely. We know that uh, Ciro Mobile is fundamental for this team. His movement opens so many space, even for the others. And the problem is, I didn't see Caicedo playing that well. So, you know, maybe maybe this means that we will see Adekanya start finally, or maybe Raul Moro, who knows. But yeah, Ciro Mobile is fundamental for this team, and it's very positive to see him playing like that. Because, yes, we have to admit that Juventus is not playing amazing football, but Juventus' defend has been quite good. And, you know, creating chances with Bonucci, the league means that you, your level is good. And uh, he created the penalty, he hit the post, uh, he was very dangerous. And I think with Ciro Mobile back, Lazio can really step up because him, Luis Alberto, are the, the players that can change this team. Uh, on the other side, Alizar, I think Milinko Isavic didn't play as well. He's struggling. And uh, yeah, at the moment, we don't have that many options there. But yeah, I'm not convinced he had a great game yesterday. Just so tired. Yeah. Just so tired. You know, I do think, though, that they, they proved a point to a certain extent. I don't think any of the midfielders were absolutely, um, you know, that impressive yesterday, but they did prove that they can put in a shift without Alberto because that was always going to be the biggest loss to this team for this match was Alberto dropping out with injury. And we know how important he is to actually creating the chances that Lazio need to score goals. But I think that they actually put in a good shift. Um, I saw Danilo Cataldi did an interview after the game and he talked about how he's basically still not recovered from the injury he got against Atalanta. And if you think about how much Cataldi's played since then, it goes to show the effort that he's putting in. Um, he said he's he's still not at his best. It's still that he's not been able to train properly. So yeah, Marco Parolo, who's, what, 36 years old, he ran, he covered more distance than any other player on the pitch last night. I think he ran about 12 kilometers. So these guys are still stepping up in, in, I thought, last night in ways that they we haven't really seen them do before. So I think that was quite encouraging because we needed that to happen without Alberto and the team. And I think that was one of the first times last night where I've been kind of impressed by the work of Cataldi and Parolo to, to kind of step in and, and do what we need them to do. Well, I think every time Cataldi plays, uh, he, he plays well. He gives everything. And this is very important, especially with a team that is so tired. Um, so, you know, I think Cataldi had another great match. And um, Lazio midfield didn't play that bad. I thought, you know, uh, even without Leiva, without uh, uh, Luis Alberto, with Milinko Isaic playing like that, I think Lazio midfield had a great match. And uh, again, I have to think that this, give credits to Lazio, but at as, as the same time, show how poor Lazio, uh, Juventus midfield is. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about yourself, but when I saw Pjanic wasn't playing, I was a little bit uh, annoyed because I thought Pjanic was playing terrible football and this would have helped Lazio. So uh, I think, I mean, I have to be honest, I, I'm impressed. I think after the first 10 minutes, I thought this could be really a, a nightmare because Juventus was in the half of Lazio for all the first 10 minutes. After that, the, the Lazio had the match in control. So it's encouraging in a way how the play is problematic that we lost. But, you know, as Cataldi said, if we play like this against Cagliari, we're going to win it. And if Ciro Mobile play like that, I mean, I'm very, I'm very encouraged. I hope we recover some player like Marzic because we need them. But, you know... Patrick finally, will be back. Yeah, Patrick will be back. But, but you know, it's... It's encouraging. Maybe, maybe now Lazio started to finding the form a little bit too late, but still not that not too late for the for the Champions League. Yeah, I mean, it turns out all we needed to do all this time was play teams in black and white striped shirts to make us feel <laughs> better about ourselves. Uh, it is it is a bit strange to have these two podcasts in a row, a nil-nil draw with Udinese and then losing to Juventus, but we've been quite optimistic about both of them. I think that highlights more than anything quite how badly we were doing beforehand. But yeah, I think we have seen in these last two games, um, a, 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 I wouldn't say a turning point, but definitely far more suggestions that they're 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 working out how to get back to, to where they were before. 
Um, you know, they, they controlled possession last night. I think they had about 54% of the ball. I, I think in a lot of areas of the game, Lazio were on the top, actually. But again, obviously, we need to cut out these individual errors so we don't concede soft goals and we need to be able to score more because we did rely on a penalty to get any sort of goal last night, even though that side of the game, I think, was, was more um, uh, encouraging as well. So, yeah, I, I I like that Cataldi thinks that way. I like that he's optimistic about the Calgary game. I think for me, that's that's the biggest opportunity um, yet. It sounds a bit obvious, but a home game against a Calgary team with very little left to play for, who haven't been playing very well themselves. And without um, Nangle. Without Nangle. And, and, you know, this this team actually finally have a bit of momentum behind them. We talked about momentum when we first came back and how important that might be. Well, it doesn't, it, again, it sounds a bit strange to say taking one point from two games counts as momentum, but I think you have to take the uh, the performances yeah. that we showed and and I, I think that that hopefully will put us in a good position for that game. And, and Alistair, let's say something. Um, I saw Atalanta, I saw Roma Inter and Atalanta was impressive at the beginning, but didn't convince me at all in the last match. They are feeling the fatigue uh, now. So Inter played badly against Roma. Roma deserved to win. They weren't able because as well Roma has problems. So it looks like that while the other team started well, now they are slightly uh, going down while Lazio is a little bit recovering. So, you know, if we want to see the positive side well, maybe Lazio can finish not only fourth, but maybe third or second. Because, you know, Atalanta hasn't got that deep selection. And if those top players start to uh, feel a little bit tired, let's not forget they have the Champions League. And in my opinion, I think Atalanta has a big, big chance. Because in mm -hmm. a single match, Atalanta can surprise anybody. So... You know, they're already qualified for the Champions League, so they could even, you know, relax and focus on August. It's going to be a very long season for uh, Juventus, Atalanta, Napoli, Roma and Inter. So, you know, the, the key is going to be the next match. If Lazio wins against Cagliari and we see another step forward, then, you know, maybe we can not finish fourth. If we lose against Yeah, and, Inter, and, and then that, that would mean that... Uh... Your your doomsday scenario that you're so keen on, where Roma win the Europa League and Juve win the Champions League, means that we'd be safe even then. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think now that Juventus have this lead, that's going to take the wind out of Inter and Atalanta sails a little bit this weekend, has basically given Juve the Scudetto, and both of those teams are now officially qualified for the Champions League. Let's not forget that we're not quite yet. Oh. Uh, still need another three points. Um, we've had a, so there's a couple of questions with that in mind. Um, Oki Ganesha Putra said, "Should we play our young guns for the rest of the game, um, uh, rest of the season?" I think he means. And then Per Nielsen said, "Do you think that Inzaghi has finally learned to use the whole squad? If he hasn't, next season can be a disaster when we enter the Champions League." So <sighs> when it comes to um, playing the young guys for the rest of the season idea, I mean, I think Lazio still have some work to do first. Yeah. And I think we do want to finish in the top three, if possible, don't we? Because if uh, your nightmare came true, it would be uh, unforgivable, really. I don't believe Indagi is going to play the youngsters against Cagliari if we don't get other injured players, obviously. Uh, Cagliari is the turning point. If we win there, it's done, right? So I think the focus is try to win this match and then we see what happens in the coming one. Um, Lazio has Verona and Brescia afterwards. So, you know, if you win those two as well, uh, the, the the table could be better. But Cagliari is the, it's the turning point. Um, we have to see. I don't remember uh, Atalanta and Inter who who they're playing against, uh, Atalanta-Bologna. So, you know, it's it's quite easy for Atalanta to win the next one. Uh, and, well, Inter-Fiorentina could be, you know, sort of a challenge. 
But yeah, and then I, don't forget they play each other on the final day as well. So one of them will drop points at the end, um, at the end of the season. So my, my, that my, means, yeah. Sorry, Ron. I, I, I would try it out Moro, for example, in the last 10, 15 minutes because we saw it yesterday. He's so fast. He can really be dangerous. That when when the defender is tired and he speeds. He runs, you know, it's not easy to tackle him correctly. So I wouldn't start them. Obviously, Jaman Anderson is a different discussion. But yeah, the youngster, I think at the moment it would be too much a risk. Let's qualify for the Champions League and then we go and see. I, I think Inzaghi's going to want to finish second at all costs, to be honest. I think that he's going to see that as being the, the, the outcome of the season that Lazio deserve. I think we all see it as the outcome we deserve by this point, having been yep. there for so long. Um, what, so with the question of whether he's finally learned to rotate the whole squad, I'm not convinced he will have, <laughs> because I think that as soon as he has the... Uh, the normal players kind of semi-fit again. He's he's going to go back to using all them. I do hope that the fact that he's brought these guys off the bench and they've shown that they can offer that energy and that thrust off the bench, um, hopefully that might convince him that he can be a little bit more brave with his substitutions in games than he has been. But I don't really see him, you know, starting many more, you know, Javan Andersons um, between now and the end of the season. But uh, because... Sorry, Anigo. He said something interesting at the end. I don't know if you listen. He said that for the Champions League, we have to improve the team. We have to sign more quality player. So I think this is really important, Alistair. And to add to this, I don't know if you listen, Tariq, before the beginning of the match, said that Lazio will sign one or two strikers. One or two strikers. This is finally the Vichy Shire Mobile is coming. <laughs> I, I still cannot believe it. I still cannot no. believe it. But, you know, maybe he understood or maybe he finally listened to Lazio Lounge. I don't know. But, you know, these are encouraging signing. Tare saying we need, we are going to sign one or two strikers. Inzaghi saying for the Champions League, we need to improve this team. That is what basically we said, you know, since the beginning of the season. So, obviously, if you ask me, Jaman Anders for the Champions League, I don't think he's ready. But Inzaghi recognized that we need to sign players because we cannot pretend that Luis Alberto, Minico Isavic and Chiron Mobile will play Champions League and Serie A all year long. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think Per Nielsen was absolutely right about that. I think it would be a disaster to kind of go with the same thing again and hope for the best. Uh, we, saw, we already saw this season in the Europa League and that's... Yeah. In a in a group that was hardly um, hardly an intimidating group of teams we were up against, and and they were terrible in it. Um, but yeah, the VJ Mobile. I don't know. We've been talking about this for three years or more, and it's still not happened. So I think I'll have to wait until it happens before I believe it. But um, yeah, I think that it's it's encouraging to see that they've already started moving a little bit in the, on the transfer front obviously we've talked about Kambula before um i mean that's an, another interesting is what one as well in that andre anderson came off the bench yesterday if we can actually get andre anderson to come off the bench and do something special that might maybe convince verona at the moment it seems like the deal that they've left on the table involves andre anderson so if he can come off the bench and do something maybe that'll actually help us get Kambula. who knows I know, I know a lot of people won't agree with me, but I wouldn't give Andre Anderson to Verona. I, I think the player has something special. He needs time a little bit to, you know, gain trust and prove it on the pitch. But I think this player can be really, really important. And as we said often on this podcast, he's the only real Vice uh, Luis Alberto. So, you know, if possible, if possible, he's only 20 years old. He's been called by the Italian national team. So, you know, if I could, I would keep him. Yeah, I think so. Me too. Um, I, I preferred the idea of sending Lombardi off there because, you know, he's at least had his, had, had his chance in the first team. 
um, or Javin Anderson even. Uh, but Andre Anderson, the, the problem for me is that, like you say, I think in order for us to work out whether or not he does have that talent that is capable of making an impact in Serie A, that he's going to be, need time on the pitch. And I just don't know when Inzaghi is going to give him that time um, or where as well. Uh He's said before he thinks he can play as a Med Salah or play as a second striker, but he's not playing him as either, really, at the no. moment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, just one more question uh, we've had from Alexander Mickelson. Going back to Ciro Immobile's great performance last night, he's asking us if Immobile is the best striker of all time. Our best striker of all time, not the best striker. <laughs> um, 30 goals now for this season. Chiro, uh, amazing achievement. Only, I think, the fifth Italian striker to manage that in Serie A. So where do you place him on the all-time list? Well, one of the top, probably. Uh, I still think that striker like Bruno Giordano that have been very underrated. Uh, maybe Bruno Giordano was a more complete striker. But obviously, talking about goals, Chiro Mogli has to be the number one. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely up there, isn't it? I think yep. Beppe Signori, um, when we did our last few icons podcast, I mean, it, 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 did, it did kind of come back to me all over again quite how good he was in a team that wasn't winning anything. So I think he struggled by the fact that he yep. left without getting a trophy, but he was a phenomenal player, you know. But he uh, that, yeah. Exactly. Um, and then obviously you have to put Giorgio Kinali in the mix as well because uh, even if maybe not the most technically gifted striker in the world by the sounds of things, I wasn't around to watch him in the 70s, but um, pretty much single-handedly took that team to a league that they had no right to win. So, um, yeah, I think the, the guys who have kind of had um, either these remarkable individual achievements like Signori or have actually gone on to win the title have, have to be up there too for me. And Alfaro? Alfaro, yeah, he's right up there. <laughs> Beside Helder Postiga and Luis Saha, maybe Gibril yep. Cisse in there as well. <laughs> yep, top striker we have, yeah, absolutely. These uh, are the ones no one talks about with Eagle Italia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have to be very careful. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, Chile Mobile, he's very important for this team. He's very important and uh, it's good to see him back. I, I think, yes, he scored on a penalty, but he had a terrific chance on the first half when he hit the post. He was moving around. He was trying to do something. So hopefully the, the problem, Alistair, is we're playing Thursday. We're playing Thursday, you know. Monday night, Turin, very late. The team drive back, uh, flight back this morning, I think. So really you have one real training to to try the team. This is terrible. Uh, Conte complaining, I think he's embarrassing. But, you know, uh, Inzaghi has a tough have t tough time. We don't know if Marozic will recover. But yeah, at this point, I would say that Cagliari is really the turning point of the season. Cagliari could really decide the rest of the season for Lazio. Because if you win it... You're in the Champions League and you can suddenly start to thinking, well, we can reach the second position. So, and if we don't win, then it's drama because, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> Roma will win against Pal. So, you know, uh, uh, heart attack. So, yeah. <laughs> Final question from Steven Scapullo. Will we do it on Thursday? I hope so. We have to do it. No, it's not I hope so. We have to. Yeah, come on. Let's have some faith. We'll yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. In the bag. E even though Zenga brings me bad memories. <laughs> I think about Crotone. He is, uh, yeah, but I mean, he is not a good football coach. Um, so I have a lot more faith against a Cagliari team coached by Zenga than I would have done by the version coached by Moran, to be honest. But, um, I'm not convinced about that, but... Yeah, no. let's see. We, we don't have time for that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can wrap it up here. Can we say Lazio Lounge, the podcast that asked the Vichy Mobile for three years? Can this be our new jingle? Yeah, the podcast that uh, the Van Bastos podcast as well, and maybe the Jordan Lukaku at McDonald's uh, <laughs> companion <laughs> podcast. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. 
Alistair, I think we can wrap it up here. We have to focus on uh, Lazio Cagliari, the turning point of the season, maybe, hopefully. And guys, thanks again for listening. Remember, you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, on YouTube. And if you want to support the channel, you can on patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. And, you know, we have a store with this lovely shirts and jerseys. So if you like them, you, there's the link in the description. And good night, everybody, and always for Salazio.